Good day, grade 12. Welcome to our next lesson on circle geometry. In this lesson, we're going to basically carry on with what we were doing in the last couple of lessons. But in this one, I'm going to be doing a lot of examples that are exam level examples. And then what I'm definitely going to do grade um, 12 is I'm going to put tomorrow, I'm going to put a live assessment onto the system and I'm going to show you how to get to it. And then what I'd really like you to do, it's multiple choice. Okay, but the point is you still have to do the working out and then you have to fill in the multiple choice. Please know that once you've entered and you've sent off the, 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 the questions, you can't actually go back. You can't do the, the test multiple times. And I'm going to leave it live for the whole weekend until Sunday evening so that I can have a look and see how you guys are doing. And then from that, I'll be able to get an idea of what sections you're in within circle geometry you're really struggling on, whether it be tangent chord, etc., etc. Okay, it won't be very long. Okay, I'm not trying to drown you guys in work. I know you guys have got tons of work. I just really want to get an idea, and it might even just be like I'll have a look tomorrow and I'll tell you about it. But basically, it might just be 10 questions on one section of circle geometry, just to make sure you guys have got the gist of that, and then so on and so on. So that's what we're going to do. Um, but in the meantime, let's get started with our circle geometry. So yesterday we were looking at this question and what we did was we did the whole of the first bit. So what we proved was that PAL was a tangent to the circle ABC. So we also were given that A2 is equal to X and that B2 was equal to X. And we were told that AB is equal to AC, which meant that the whole of this angle equals that angle. Okay, and we proved that that, okay, so yeah, and therefore that equals that as well. Right, so that's what we proved yesterday. Now they're saying they want us to prove that AB, line AB, is a tangent AB. Line AB is a tangent to circle ADP, ADP. So if you had to pretend that there was a circle going through ADP, and you needed to prove that this line was a tangent. Okay, well, yesterday I kind of actually hinted it um, by putting something down, and I suggested you guys look at this, take a screenshot of this, or go look at it on the recordings and try this part of the question. But yesterday I'd filled in that this was angle is equal to X. And the reason I said that that equal angle was equal to X was because PAL or AP was parallel to BC, which meant that these two angles were alternate. Okay, these two angles. That meant that B2 is equal to angle P. Okay, and we're going to use that in this proof. So let's write that down and then I'll show you how we're going to use it. Okay, we've said that, therefore we can say that B2, angle B2, is equal to X, because we said it be so, which equals angle P. And why? Because they're alternate angles and AP is parallel to BC, right? Then, then we also know from here that A2 equals B2, which is given, okay? Therefore, we can say that A2 is equal to, therefore, we can say that A2 is equal to P, right? But that is the tan chord theorem because if this is the tangent and that's the chord, then this angle would be the angle subtended by that chord in the opposite side of the circle. So you can say, but that obeys the tan chord theorem. Therefore, um, AB is a tangent to circle ADB. I'm not writing it out. Okay, so do you guys understand that? Okay, so I kind of gave you the hint yesterday by drawing that in. Um, 
And again, what I would like you to suggest you guys do, and especially when you're practicing your circle geometry, is maybe the way I would do it. For example, if I look at this picture, the way that I would do it is I would immediately try, I'd read the information, always read the blurb, okay? And before they ask me to prove something, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to see if I can see if anything's equal to something else before I even start reading this. Because a lot of times just by reading the information and applying it and filling in what I know equals whatever, by the time I read these questions, I have solved the problem. Now, back in the days of the Dark Ages, when I was at school, we weren't given a um, diagram sheet. We actually had to draw our diagrams for ourselves. And that was, okay, you were given time to do it, but still. But the point is that it actually was great because by the time I'd finished drawing it and filling in all my lines and all my equal signs and everything else, I actually had a very good feeling of what was going on in this diagram. So in my head, I'd kind of solved all these things before I even had to look for them, okay? Nowadays, I don't expect you to do the diagram, which is great because there's less error or possibility for error, okay? But, but it does mean that you need to read through carefully and highlight the information for yourself. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so it says in the accompanying figure, two circles intersect at F and a D. Okay, it says BFT is a tangent. So they tell us that it's a tangent to the smaller circle. Okay, and remember what I said to you about highlighters and colors? Okay, always try and use them, but obviously don't hide what, you, what information it says. Straight line AFE is drawn such that FD is equal to FE. So FD is equal to FE. And CDE is a straight line. CD is a straight line such that AC and chord AC and chord BF cut at K. Right. So before I do anything else, I'm going to say, okay, fine. Well, if these two are equal, then this angle equals that angle, right? Because they're base angles in isosceles triangle. But I've just been told that this is a tangent. So because of that, because of the tan chord theorem, this angle equals that angle, and this angle equals that angle. There's my tangent. Let me draw some different colors so you can see it. Okay, there's my tangent for this bit. There's the chord. And there's the angle, it's a tens, okay? Or if I go back to the other one, there's my tangent, there's my chord, and there's the angle, it's a tens. And if it makes it easier for you, let these things be x. Okay, if it makes it easier for you, let it be x. Okay, so I've already now got in some angles, okay? We'll worry about other angles in a minute, okay? So now it says prove that BT is parallel to CE. Prove that BT is parallel to CE, but I've already done it because these angles are alternate angles, right? So this angle is equal to that angle, that angle is equal to that angle, and these are alternate. So, da da! So, let's go back and write down what we wrote. We said, okay, that angle, let's let, let's let angle F equal X, just to make it easier for ourselves. Therefore, angle, hmm, I wonder if that's F, E, F, E, that's an E. So let's let angle E equal X, right? Then do you agree that angle F, D, E, angle F, D, E equals X? And the reason is base angle of isosceles triangle, right? So therefore, that's X, right? Now... Do we agree that therefore we can say that angle TFE, this angle here, is equal to X, Y because of the tan chord theorem, right? So now we've got that this equals X and we've got that this equals X, but we can say that TFE is parallel, no, is alternate to angle B, okay? But they're also equal, but they're also equal. But TFE equals angle E 
Therefore, we can say that BT has to be parallel to CE. Right, so now we know that the whole of this line is parallel, sorry about the strange line, is parallel to BT. That's quite nice, okay? So we've done that. Now it says, sorry, I didn't change color before I decided to do anything else. Now it says prove that B, where's B? B, C, E, F is a parallelogram. Okay, so we've got one pair, of par one side, one pair, one side, let's try again, one pair of sides is parallel at the moment, okay? Doesn't really help us that much, okay? What are the things that help us prove that something is a parallelogram? We've got one pair of opposite sides parallel and equal, two pairs of opposite sides are parallel, and then there's things about diagonals and that, but we don't have any diagonals. So we've got that this side here is parallel to this side, okay? Can we somehow work out that these lines, that FE is parallel to BC? Okay, so let's go back a little bit, just a half a step. Remember that the way maths work, works is that generally you use what you've already proven. We've already proven that B, that BT is parallel to CE, and we stated, but we never used it in the last lesson, I mean the last question, that this is X, which means that is X, okay, because that is X. So we can say that angle F2 is equal to X, for exactly the same reason as before, we could say that it's, um, we could either say it's tan chord to E, or you can say that it's alternate to D2, because it equals D2 and Y alternate angles. Okay, so we know that that is X. But now, do you see that B, C, D, F is a cyclic quad? Okay. And what do we know about angles of cyclic quads? We know that opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary, which means that this angle here has to be 180 degrees minus X, okay? So we can say that angle B, C, D equals 180 degrees minus X, Y, opposite angles of, and now you have to name the cyclic quad, Okay, of cyclic quad, you need to tell me which one you're talking about. Does B, B, C, D, F of B, C, D, F are supplementary? But have a look at this. We know that angle E is equal to X because we let it be so. This angle here is 180 minus X. But if you look carefully, you can see that that they actually form the shape of co-interior angles. So therefore, we can say that FE has to be parallel to BC. Okay, so let's write that down. We can say, well, um, but angle BCD plus angle E equal 180 degrees. Therefore, we can say that FE is parallel to BC because of co-interior angles. Therefore, BCEF is a parallelogram. I'm not writing out the whole thing. Okay, right, happy with that. So now we've proven that this line is parallel to this line and this line is parallel to that line there. Now, they want us to prove that AC is equal to BF, and I'm running out of colors. They want us to prove that AC, AC is equal to BF. AC is equal to BF. Hmm. 
So they want us to prove that the whole of that length is equal to the whole of that length. Okay. Do you agree that that seems a bit weird until we realize that this is equal to that because of the fact that that's a parallelogram, right? And if that's the case, all we need to do is prove that AC is equal to CE and then we've got it made, which means that all we have to do is prove that that's an isosceles triangle and that that is equal to X. That's what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that that angle there is equal to X. Sneaky, hey? Okay, so let's see how we can do that. Is there anything that is subtended? No, but there's a cyclic word. Okay, fine. So if you look carefully, and again, I'm going to change color, and I'm sorry about this coloring, but do you see that this angle here, this here, is a cyclic word? Okay. We know that that angle there is X. It's a horrible color, hey? I mean, it's just not a horrible in general, just that you can't see it very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go black. So, that there is X. Okay, that there, that angle there is X, right? But that is an exterior angle to a cyclic quad because this line is extended, which means that the interior opposite angle has to equal X as well. And ta-da, we've just proven that that is an isosceles triangle and therefore that AC is equal to CE. Okay, so that was quite tricky because you had to realize what we were going for. Okay, so what do you need to say? You need to say that, well, um, A, you need to say BF is equal to CE. CE. Why? Because they are, it's a, because of parallelogram that we've just proven, par parallelogram B, C, E, F. Okay, that's true. Now, we're also going to say that angle F, D, E, angle F, D, E is equal to X. We wrote that down and we can say proved above. How nice is that? Proved above. But that is equal to angle A, okay? But then that A is also equal to X, why? Because the exterior angle equals the int opposite angle. And you don't need to say it's exactly quite because I'll know that you meant that. You can say, but, I mean, no. Therefore, angle A equals angle E, right? Therefore, they are base angles of isosceles triangle ACE. Therefore, AC has to equal CE, which we've said equals BF. Turn above. Ta -da! And that's the end of that. Sure. So that was quite a tricky question, simply because you had to realize where you were aiming for and what you were aiming at. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Okay, it says in the diagram, EF and EG are tangents. So again, EF and EG are tangents, right? To the circle set to O. Okay, e FH is parallel to FEK. FH, oh, there we go. FH is parallel to EK. And EK intersects FG at J and meets at da, da, da. Let angle H equals X. So letting this be X. This little angle there is X. Okay, so we've got tangents, we've got a center of the circle, which means we've got radii and diameters and things like that. Well, not necessarily diameters, but definitely radii. 
and we've got parallel lines, which means we're going to have angles with parallel lines as well. Okay, these are the tangent. I just want to draw that line a little bit neater. Okay, so we've got that already. So now I'm immediately going to think, well, are there any angles in here that I can immediately say equal x already? So if this is x and that is a tangent, do you agree that x is subtended by line fg? Okay, so if I take my fingers down this line here and this line here, I see it is subtended by fg. Therefore, I can say that f1 is equal to x. And I can say that OG1 is equal to X because it's also tan chord, right? I've got that already. Also, if this is X, do you agree that O1 is going to be 2X? Because the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Right, so I already have some angles with X. Also, last thing I can think of to fill in is that because that there is a radius, the whole of this is 90 degrees and the whole of this is 90 degrees. Okay, the whole of that going to there and the whole of that going to there. Okay, so now let's see what our first question is. The first question is prove that F O G E. Okay, F O G E. E is a cyclic quad. So we need to prove that these, this is a cyclic quad. F, O, G, E. And we're actually almost there. Okay, there are two ways that we can do this, and I'm going to show you both ways. I just want to erase this, it's terrible. I don't know why I can't draw a straight line at that point. Okay. There we go. Okay. One of the things that we can say that prove something is a cyclic quad is that opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. Okay. So do you agree that the whole of angle F is 90 degrees? And the whole of angle G, okay, let me try again. E in the cyclic quad, EFO, EFO equals 90 degrees. Why? Because this is a tangent and that's a radius. So you can say tangent is perpendicular to the radius, okay? Similarly, we can say EGO, E. GO let's try again, equals 90 degrees. They and the same reason tangents are perpendicular to the radius. Therefore, do you agree that we can say therefore if OGE is a cyclic quad? Why? Because opposite angles are supplementary. Okay. Isn't that awesome? Okay, opposite angles are supplementary, so we're sorted with that. Right, now it asks us to do the following. It says, prove that EG is a tangent to circle GJK. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just to make things a little bit neater, is I'm going to erase all this, and I'm going to say, okay, fine, we've just proven that this, yeah, is a cyclic quad. Okay, we know that this is x, we know that this is 2x, we know that this here is x, we know that that little angle there is x, and we know that that there is 90 degrees and that there is 90 degrees. So we know that's a cyclic quad. Okay, now they say they want us to prove that eg, eg, this line here is a tangent to circle G, J, K. So they're saying, let's pretend that that's a little circle there. And they want us to prove that this is a tangent to that circle. 
So dear grief, that's the case. We know that this line here, this there is x, okay? That there is x angle, that's x. We need to somehow prove that k1 is x as well, and then we're sorted. Okay, so let me just erase the red so you can see again what I'm talking about. Okay, we need to somehow prove We need to somehow prove, we know that this is x. This here is our circle, g, j, k. Okay, there's our circle, g, j, k. We need to somehow prove that k1 is also x. And then we will know that e, g is a tangent to the little circle going through that. So is there a way that we could maybe work out that that is x? We've just proven that this is a cyclic quad, right? Sure. Okay, but we've got some alternate angles going on along here. So let's see if I can work out that something is wrong with that. So we've got that this is 2x. We agree that that whole angle there is 180 minus 2x. Okay. And this line here is parallel with that line. And... I just have to think for a second. Oh, there we go. Okay, right. So do you agree we've just proven that this thing here is a cyclic quad? We've proven that this whole thing, yeah, is a cyclic quad. Um, we've got F, O, G, E is a cyclic quad. Okay, do you agree with that? And if that's the case, we can look for some subtending. Okay, we can look for some subtending. And we can say, well, actually, we know that this angle here is X, and that is subtended by EG. Okay, right? Now, Sorry, I need to delete some of my writing so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, right. So I've said that this angle here is X. I've said this angle here is X, right? I've also said that this is 2X because the angle of center is twice the angle of circumference. We have that this line is parallel to that line, which means that this angle, here, this whole angle here is equal to the whole of that angle there. Okay, right, so we're now trying to prove that that angle there, this one, K1, is equal to X. We have just proven that E, F, O, and G is a cyclic quad, which means the whole of this is 180 minus 2X. Right, so now do you agree that we can do a little bit of subtending here? Because it can see that this angle here is X, okay? And that angle is subtended by E, F, okay? Is there any other angle that we can think of that might be subtended as well, okay? Think about it. Okay. Is there a way, let's think of it a different way. Is there a way that we can prove that E, F, K, G is a cyclic quad? E, F, K, G is a cyclic quad. Just putting it out there, I want you to think. Okay. Right. So now that I've given you some time to think. Okay. So now that I've given you some time to think, let's go through this. Okay, so we know that this is 2x, we know that that but there is x, we know that the whole of this is 90 degrees. So do you agree that that little angle there must be what? It must be 90 minus x. And because these are radii, how much is this little angle here? This angle there must also be 90 minus x. Okay, that there is 90 minus x from there. To there is 90 minus x. Okay, so then if we have a look at this, we're trying to get this angle here. 
we have, hmm, okay, we have, I'm just trying to change color, that this angle here, we want this angle, right? We have that this angle here is 90 minus X. We have that the whole of that angle there is 90, which is why that's 90 minus X. We have that these are equal, and we have to prove that this is equal to angle X. Or we could have a look at that one. Okay, and can you see that if this whole angle here is 90, and that there is 90 minus X, therefore this angle here, also has to be that there has got to be equal to that angle there, which means that this tangent here is a tangent to that circle there. Oh, draw the circle terribly. Okay, because we could either prove that that X is equal to K1, or we can prove that this angle here is equal to this J here. Okay, so I want you to try and write that out for yourselves for homework. I'm not going to write it out. I'm going to move on, but I want you to try and write it out for yourselves. And then what I'm going to do is on Monday, no, tomorrow, I'm going to come and write that out for you and show you how to write it out. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next question. We're not doing that previous one because that's based on this writing out. And I want you to learn to try and write it out. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to try it and then I'll show you how to do it. Let's look at this circle here. It's a little bit easier, but I'm going to go through it anyway with you. It says ABCD is a cyclic quad. AS is a tangent. Okay, so that's a tangent. Right. And it says CBS is a straight line, and they tell you that AD is equal to, is parallel, AD, AD is parallel to BC, and it's also equal to BD. And they say name with reasons five other angles equal to X. So first of all, let's identify X, that there is X, okay? So let's just randomly do this. This means that this would be XY, because they're base angles of an isosceles triangle, right? That means that, and this is a cyclic quad here, and these are tangents. So therefore, this angle here is X as well, because that's a tan chord theorem. Okay, so let's write this out. Okay, A2 equals XY, because it is given, right? Then you've got B2 equals XY, base angles of isosceles triangle, okay. Then we can say that, okay, A1 is equal to XY because of the tan chord theorem, okay. So that there, if you see that that is a tangent and that is the chord, then that is also equal to X, okay, nice and easy, right? Then we haven't even used our parallel lines yet. Ah, so therefore we can say that S1 is equal to X because those two lines are corresponding. So we can say S1 equals XY because they're corresponding. Okay, and it said five other angles, so this dude here doesn't count. Okay, so now we know that that is X. Admittedly, this is X as well, but I don't think they expect us to do that one because it doesn't have a number. <clears throat> okay, so then what else do we have? Ah, we know that this line is parallel to this. Therefore, we can say that B3 is X because these are alternate angles. So we can say B3 equals X. Y, alternate angles, okay? And finally, that means that D1 plus D2 has to equal X, Y, the exterior angle equals the int opposite angles. The whole of this is X as well. 
the whole of that is x. Okay then, so there's our five. Let's just check one, two, three, four, five. There's our five. Now it says prove that ASCD is a parallelogram. Now let me just get another color. Prove that A S C D is a parallelogram. Well, a parallelogram has one pair of opposite sides parallel and equal. Forward has one pair of opposite sides and two pairs of opposite sides parallel. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of things with diagonals which we don't have to worry about. Okay, so we already have one pair of opposite sides parallel. So if we can prove another pair of opposite sides parallel, then we're sorted. Um, otherwise, we'll have to go with the equals root. Okay, so we know that that line there is equal to this line. So in order for it to be equal, we'd have to have the whole of this line is equal to the whole of that line, which is a bit awkward to prove. So I think we need to go for parallel. So we know that this line is parallel with this line. So all we have to prove is that that line is parallel with this. Okay, do you agree that we said that A2 is X because it was given? But they also tell us that A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D is a cyclic quad. Therefore, we can say, well, in that case, this has to be 180 degrees minus X. So we can say angle C equals 180 degrees minus X, Y, because opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary, okay? But this is supplementary to angle S1, okay? But we could say that angle C plus angle S1 equal 180 degrees, okay? Therefore, DC has to be parallel to AS, okay? That these have to be parallel to the AS because these, these angles are my cointerior angles, cointerior angles. Therefore, ASCD is a parallelogram. There you go. Sure, okay, so that was a lot easier than the previous one, let's move on. Now it says determine, oh, sorry, determine, giving reasons, but what have I done? I've skipped through the information, I've just read the question, and that is fatal, it's a fatal flaw. So let's read through the information. First of all, it says there's a tangent KT, so that's a tangent KT, which is parallel, parallel to the chord NM, Okay, and NT cuts the circuit at L, and triangle KML is drawn, and it tells that M2 is 40 degrees and MKT is 84 degrees. MKT, the whole of this, is 84 degrees. Okay, they ask us to determine with reasons the sizes of K2, N1, T, L2, and L1. Okay, so... Let's have a look at this. Do you agree that K2 obeys the tan chord theorem? Because if this is 40 degrees and that is a tangent and that there is a chord, this angle here has to be 40 degrees. So this is 40 degrees and you would say tan chord. Okay, so now we know that that's 40. Now they want angle N1. Okay, well, that's pretty easy because K1 is equal to 84 minus 40 degrees. Okay, so K1 equals 84 minus 40 degrees, which is going to be 44 degrees. Do you agree? So that there is K1, right? The whole of this is 84, this bit's 40, therefore that little bit is 44. But K1 is subtended by LM. And N1 is also subtended by LM, so therefore N1 is 44 degrees as well. So we can say that N1 is 44 degrees, um, and I'd say equal angle subtended by 
same arc. Okay, awesome. So now we've got that that's 44 degrees. Now they want angle T. Okay, so yay, T is very easy because they told us that NM is parallel to KT. So therefore T is equal to 44 degrees. Why? Because it's alternate, it forms a Z. There's your Z. Okay, there's your Z. So that's 44 degrees and that's alternate angles. Okay, so now we know that that's 44 degrees. Now we want L2. L2. Okay. And I'm just wondering how many steps I need to get to get there. That is suspended by the same as that. We know that that's parallel. We know that's 40, that's 84. Okay, um, there's a very easy way to do this. We can say the exterior angle is the sum of the two interior opposite angles. They're not expecting anything complicated. If you look over here, here is a triangle. Okay, yes, K and L, and here is K and T, and this angle is the exterior angle to this triangle. So do you agree that that is the sum of this angle plus this angle? So we could say, let's try again, that L2 is going to be 84 degrees. Why? Exterior angle equals sum of two in opposite angles and finally we want angle so this is 84 degrees and finally we want angle l1 l1 okay so angle l1 requires a little bit more thinking for the simple reason that we need to use what we have already actually we don't we can just go with this we've got that triangle there, oopsie, sorry about that. Do you agree that this angle here is 44 degrees? This angle here is 40 degrees. And that angle there is 84 degrees. And we just want this one, which is basically the last little bit of this line, of this triangle, okay? That there is the last little bit of the triangle. So we can say that L1 is equal to 180 degrees minus bracket 44 plus 40 plus 84, which equals 180 degrees minus 84 plus 84 which is 180 degrees minus 164 degrees, which is 16 degrees. And you can just write angle sum of triangle. Okay, not too bad, hey? Okay, right, great tools. That's it for today for maths. Um, I would really strenuously urge you, if you're watching this, to please go back and try and write out this proof. And then um, I'm gonna go through it with you guys tomorrow. I promise I will. And then we will move on to the rest of this question. Okay, and then we will move on to more examples. But I'm also going to show you how um, to basically do a live assessment so that you guys can do it. And then I can get a feel for what you guys are understanding and not understanding in this section of work. I hope you have a great day.